In a world where you're constantly under attack by goblins, wolves, cyclops, goblins, wolves, goblins, and more, there is no choice but to fight back. But in Dragon's Dogma 2, there's a vocation known as the trickster that doesn't fight back with damage. Why, you ask? Because they suck at dealing damage. Like, seriously, I am hitting this cyclops with my sensor, and that health bar is not moving. The trickster exists to, well, trick enemies, get them to fight each other, or just end it all. And one of their best moves is to simply power up your allies and let them do the work for you while you grab a snack from the kitchen. But there's one trickster out there that has gone off the beaten path. This trickster has gone off the beaten path and decided that they don't need a main pawn to command in battle. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to beat Dragon's Dogma 2 with only the trickster. Introducing my trickster, Loki. Probably could have done a little better with the character creation, but I wanted to get started as soon as possible because this playthrough is going to be agonizing, I'm sure of it. But my curiosity has gotten the better of me, and now I need to know if it's possible to beat the game with just the trickster. And the torture begins immediately because Dragon's Dogma 2 only has one save file, so I had to delete all of the progress I've made so far, which to be fair was only about 40 hours of gameplay, but still, feels bad. My first immediate problem is that the trickster isn't a playable vocation at the start of the game, so until I manage to unlock it, I won't have access to any weapons, armor, or abilities other than just throwing stuff. The game starts with Loki locked in a forced labor camp, where I impressively move a rock from one location to another. I was ready to move another rock, but unfortunately a Medusa attacked and put a stop to my hard work. The game equipped me with some mage gear to fight this Medusa, but Loki is a pure trickster and refuses to use any weapon that isn't specifically for the trickster vocation. And without a weapon, my only way to fight this thing was to pick stuff up and throw it. I picked up a crate and threw it. I picked up a rock and I threw it. I picked up this terrified NPC and I threw them. And that was so fun, I went back to grab another one and another, and I tried to go for one more only to get tail whipped straight into a cinematic of the Medusa running away from my obvious might. In the chaos, I took the opportunity to escape the forced labor camp by jumping off a cliff right onto the back of a griffin. What are the odds? My ride was shot down by an expert markswoman, and I woke up in front of a soldier named Justin. I figured my best bet was to stick with Justin and let him protect me while I look for some trickster gear, but when I rounded the corner to see some goblins, my instincts kicked in. Get in there, Justin, defend me. Oh shit, that actually one-shot the goblin. I tried to let Justin fight them off for me, but this guy has no power behind his swings, and I'm not going to wait around for him to tickle them to death, so I picked him back up and threw him into the remaining goblins one at a time, taking them both down. We turned the next corner to see more goblins, but I didn't want to deal with that, so I just took off leaving Justin to take care of it. He'll be fine. I arrived at the Border Watch outpost and it was time to make my main pawn. I half-assed it big time because in a moment it's really not going to matter anyways. I named my main pawn Thor, but I'm not about to let him steal my thunder for this entire playthrough. What has come over you, Arisen? <laughs> This is my story, not yours, brother. I set off for Melv, where I have a flashback of my past. I did battle with a great dragon, but something about the vision isn't quite right. My character appears to be wielding a sword and shield, which I'd never do. So rather than fight in such an honorable way, I turn my back on the dragon in a show of disrespect. Eventually the battle just times out and goes to a cinematic where I get barbecued a little bit more before the dragon steals my heart and gobbles it up. Guess I'm going to have to do something to get that back. I woke up to see Ulrika, the same girl that shot down the griffin I was riding. She's proven herself to me and I have plans for her, but not just yet. From here, I'm to accompany a man named Gregor to the capital. Hopefully he proves more useful in battle than Justin was. Initially, I did not trust Gregor to handle the goblins and I picked one of his guards up and threw it right at a goblin, but it became clear to me that I didn't need to do anything. This squad was more than capable of handling a couple goblins, so while they were killing goblins on one side of the road, I completely embarrassed a goblin on the other by skillfully dodging his every attack. Nice try. Too slow. Just give up. Oh, 
he hit me. I did my part in the next battle by throwing a goblin off a cliff, and after this group was taken care of, I gained a vocation rank as a mage. This is the only vocation level up in the entire video that isn't Trickster. I found some camping equipment and a fire pit, so me and my guards took a well-deserved rest before setting out on the road again. The journey down the road was very slow, mostly waiting for Gregor to finish off groups of goblins for me. To make matters worse, I managed to get myself slaughtered by a siren that put me to sleep before flying me up high and splattering my body on a rock. Despite this, we eventually reached a roadblock where a cyclops appeared out of nowhere and I realized it was my time to shine. There was an explosive barrel on the ground nearby so I tossed it at the cyclops knee for big damage. When the cyclops was on its last legs, I swooped in with a rock throw to claim the kill. The glory is mine. From here, we hitched a ride in an ox cart, but it was ambushed on the road. I saw no reason to get up for a few goblins, so I just waited until the soldiers had cleared the road so we could continue to the capital. The capital of Vermund has a port crystal, which acts as a fast travel location, and I used all the gold that I had up to this point to purchase a fairy stone from a merchant, which allows me to fast travel one time to any port crystal. It's now time for me to make a long trek to Batal, where I can unlock the trickster vocation. Batal is more of a mid to late game location, but I don't have much of a choice in this challenge run. So to try to avoid about half the trip, I'm going to take an ox cart to the checkpoint rest town. That is, as long as the ox cart doesn't get ambushed on the road. I think I'm getting ambushed. Oh my gosh, it just ripped me out of the ox cart. Okay, so we're getting ambushed by wolves. Um, This is not ideal. Oh my gosh, they are everywhere. I don't have any way to fight like at all. I can't do anything but run. All right, I don't I don't know how I'm going to get away from these wolves. They, are, they just keep chasing me. And so I'm going to just try and run back to the ox cart because hopefully they won the fight. But oh my gosh, no, don't, don't hit me again. Don't hit me again. I just need to get off the ledge. I, need, oh, I made it off the ledge. Holy shit, I need my weapon so bad. Since I had died and the ox cart was gone, I have no choice but to travel on foot. Now there's two paths to take and I opted for the shorter run through a cave, a cave that's full of sirens that have attacks that are extremely difficult to avoid and apparently there's a ton of bandits in the cave too. Dude, why are the bandits friends with the sirens? I don't understand. Fight each other and leave me alone. All right, I'm pretty sure I can make it through if I just manage my stamina well. I've just got to dodge, duck, dip, dive, and die. A wiser man might have tried a different route instead of just death running through the cave over and over, but this video isn't starring a wise man. It is starring a stubborn man who is willing to get his face stomped in as many times as necessary to accomplish his goal. I finally made it through the cave, but the bandits did not stop chasing me. A pawn on the road started attacking them, but the bandits stayed focused focused on me. I picked up a healing herb on the way and actually got cut down by the bandits moments later, but in Dragon's Dogma 2, you can use healing items after reaching zero health, so I healed and kept running into the checkpoint rest town. A cinematic for the town played, which hilariously showed the bandits trying to finish me off with some somersault skull splitters, uh, but after the cinematic, I managed to get away and climb to some high ground and watch the town guards kill the bandits for me. I'd finally made it, but I'm still only halfway there. I took a much needed rest at the inn. At the border gate to Batal, I asked the guard to let me through and he asked for my permit. I don't have a permit. Leave this place at once. You have no right to be here. Okay, so I can't just go through the gate. Time to get a little tricky. There's a fancy enclosed ox cart that arrives at the gate and it is let through. So I very stealthily stood in the cart to make it through the gate. I don't know how he doesn't see me, but I am so close to unlocking the trickster vocation now. I just need to make it all the way to there. See that temple way down there off in the distance? Yup, that's the spot. I'd seen on Reddit that people were avoiding fall damage with something they call pawn surfing, but I don't have any pawns, so I tried to tackle a random guard to see if it would work. It did not. Fine, I will slowly make my way down the cliffside by jumping little bits at a time. I managed to avoid detection from any enemies along the way, and I finally spoke to the NPC necessary to unlock the trickster vocation. Things are finally looking up. I tossed my fairy stone to the sky and teleported back to Vermund, visiting the vocation guild and officially changing my 
vocation to trickster. The trickster wields a smoke dispensing sensor to conjure illusions. I'm not able to deal any meaningful damage to enemies by hitting them, and instead I need to trick them into killing each other or themselves. The only ability I can use right now is Sweeping Shroud, which simply attracts the attention of all nearby enemies to make them attack me. However, I can summon a Simulacrum, and whenever an enemy would be attacking me, they're going to focus on my Simulacrum instead as long as it is summoned. And for the rest of this video, I'm going to refer to my Simulacrum as my ghost, because I don't want to say that word over and over again. Before leaving town, a woman named Mildred gave me a house to stay in for free for a week, which is nice because I'm completely broke and I can't afford to rest at the inn. I also started all the main story quests and headed out to start leveling up as a trickster. Fighting as the trickster without any party members is difficult. Usually the trickster's role is to attract the attention of enemies so your party can focus on attacking, but that isn't going to work well for me. Instead, I need to attach my ghost to an enemy so they'll get attacked and killed by all of their friends. The issue is that I can only attach my ghost to an enemy from very close range, and if I get hit by anything, a single point of damage, my ghost vanishes and I have to resummon it. Summoning the ghost takes like three seconds, and I'm completely vulnerable to attacks while doing it, so sometimes I'll summon a new ghost only to get hit immediately and have to run off and try and summon it again. This is an insanely punishing game mechanic for a vocation that is honestly already pretty bad, and it made me want to scream, but to be fair, there's no good reason any trickster should be running around without backup, so, you know, it's, it's a little bit on me. After getting mauled by some wolves, goblins, and a cyclops, I successfully made it to the game over screen. A screen that I'll be very familiar with by the end of this playthrough. Slowly though, with every game over screen I reached, I was learning. I was figuring out how the enemy AI worked, how to manipulate their movements in my favor, and how to get them to murder each other and leave me alone. The trickster tutorial is poorly written in my opinion, and that caused me to be a little confused at first. It says that attaching my ghost to an enemy is possessing them, but that's not really how I'd describe it. I'd say that it marks them. The enemy with my ghost attached to them will focus all their attention on attacking me, and if they land a hit, the ghost will vanish. But every single other enemy will focus on attacking the marked enemy, and will completely leave me alone. So, once I manage to attach my ghost, I just need to focus on avoiding the enemy that it's attached to. Once I understood how this worked, I was able to exist on the battlefield a little bit more confidently. For example, in a cave, I had my ghost attached to a goblin, and when I turned around, I saw another goblin approaching with an explosive barrel. But I knew I didn't need to fear the goblin with the explosives, because he essentially doesn't even know I exist. His sole focus is to attack the marked enemy, and I finally scored my first trickster vocation rank up. Now that I know how the enemy AI works a little bit better, I can start finding a way to fight back. I started by just letting my ghost distract a goblin while I found a rock to throw it at him and finish him off. Then with a larger group of goblins, I would attach my ghost to one of them and then evade his attacks while the other ones just killed off the marked enemy. I still found myself getting into bad situations like here where I was just pinned against a wall getting slashed to pieces by goblins, but I managed to escape and resummon my ghost. I kept on experimenting with throwing rocks at goblins to finish them off, and it honestly worked amazingly, at least until I ran out of rocks. So I had to find a new resource to throw, so I picked up a dead goblin corpse and threw that instead and successfully cleared the whole room. In another room, there's a bunch of huge boulder traps that for some reason the goblins decided to set off on themselves, but I'm not complaining, the whole point is to let them do my job for me. I positioned my ghost under another boulder and broke it free myself to roll it down onto the goblins, and then I started using the stones left behind in the rubble to slaughter every other goblin in the room one at a time. I used a goblin corpse to throw at another goblin, and when it was staggered, I picked it up and threw it at the final goblin. Little by little, I was developing my combat strategy. Once I'd finished clearing the room, I hit vocation rank 3 and decided to head back to town to see what new abilities I could learn. There were two abilities available, but one of them was solely used to buff party members, and I have no party members. So I learned Delusory Screen, which puts up a fake wall that blocks hostile targets movement and vision. I also picked up a core skill that lets me summon my ghost a little bit faster, which is kind of a game changer if I'm being honest. Really, really helps out. 
I started working on story quests, which put me on the road towards Harv Village. In a fight with goblins, I tried to attach my ghost to an enemy, but immediately took damage. So I tried to run off and summon my illusory wall, and it worked perfectly. The goblins stopped pursuing me, and it gave me the space I needed to summon a new ghost. I just ran around the battlefield, darting in and out of my illusory walls, attaching my ghost to new enemies to mark them for death by friendly fire. Once most of the goblins had killed each other, I picked up a corpse and tossed it at another goblin to stagger them, then I picked up the staggered goblin and threw them at their friend, and if I'm quick, I can keep throwing the same goblins over and over again before they ever have a chance to stand up, which lets me damage two enemies with each throw. Down the road a little further, I came across an ogre, and I just had no choice but to run away. I might have figured out some ways to battle small enemies, but I still have no way to deal with the big boys. I completed my quest in Harv by just combining everything I'd learned so far. I threw rocks, pitted my enemies against each other, threw them at each other, and in no time, the village was saved from its Saurian invaders. After a little bit more questing, I ranked up to level 4 as a trickster, but I decided to keep adventuring until I hit level 5. My next quest was in Melv, which is a very long distance down the road, so I hitched a ride on an ox cart, hoping that I wasn't going to get ambushed on the road. Fuck me. It looks like I am traveling on foot. Man, this guy is just getting licked and munched on by an ogre, but I, I just can't do anything. I mean, sorry, buddy, but I gotta go. Traveling on the road is actually really, really safe as a trickster. Nothing targets me. I can just recall my ghost every so often, and I will get completely ignored by every single enemy. I stopped to fight along the way, and I found out that if I have an enemy possessed by my ghost, I can actually just stand inside my illusory wall, and almost all the time, I won't get attacked. They just don't know that I'm there, so I can literally just hide out inside my walls and mark enemies with my ghost and just watch the fight unfold. I was nearly to Melv, but I needed 209 more discipline to get to Trickster rank 5, so I hid out inside a wall and marked enemies to get them killed. I still do get caught off guard occasionally putting me in danger, but it's actually not too hard to manage these fights. I gained that last bit of discipline I needed to rank up, and I immediately visited a vocation guild to learn Fickle Floor. This is how I will take on larger foes. I can create a false floor that will trick monsters into walking off cliff sides. I just need to combine Fickle Floor with Espial Incense, which lets me project my spirit so I can position my ghost off the edge of a cliff and entice monsters to their doom. But I'm just outside Melv, so I'll have to try out these new abilities a little later. Because Melv is under attack by a dragon, and I really did my best to try and help fight this dragon. I smacked this thing with my sensor a bunch of times, but it does almost zero damage, and I truly have no way to fight dragons right now, which is a huge problem, because the final boss in this game is obviously the dragon who stole my heart. So I do need to find a way to kill dragons if I want to beat the game, but there's nothing I can do about it right now. So I went ahead and just let the NPCs kill this dragon for me and drive it off before I finished my quest in Melv to head out back on the road. I'm ready to hitch a ride on an ox cart back to the capital and hopefully I don't get ambushed on the road. Oh my gosh, are you serious? When am I going to catch a break? Fuck, man. Uh, all right, um, at least I guess I can try out my new abilities. I used Espial Incense to position my ghost off the side of a cliff and then tried to get the Cyclops' attention. I put down a fickle floor and I guess my ghost wasn't far enough away because the Cyclops just stood on the edge of the cliffside wailing on it. It took a long time, but eventually I managed to get this Cyclops to fall off the cliff only to realize that it wasn't much of a cliff, just a short drop off, and I couldn't tell because it was nighttime and I wasn't really looking around, it was a hectic battle. So that's the ox that was attached to the cart, so looks like I am walking the rest of the way again. Okay, I'm hoping that this is going to be my first ogre kill. I'm gonna try and bait him into the river here. So I put my platform down, and then I am going to position my ghost and... Motherfucker, he cleared the entire river. Oh, great. I got a consolation kill on a wolf. Oh, looks like there's a Cyclops in town. Uh, maybe this can be my first large monster kill. I could try and get him to fall into the moat. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Let's go check out this moat. Just chase my ghost. Yes, yes, yes. Whoa, dude. What the hell? 
Why build a moat if it isn't deep enough to kill anything? <laughs> Come on. I decided to just run away from the Cyclops fight, except that it magically teleported back into town and I was at a loss. I can't fight this thing. I, I don't have a way to fight it uh, with this useless four inch deep moat. But to my surprise, the NPC I needed to turn my quest into just walked up to me and started talking while the Cyclops battled guards in the background. So I'm taking the win. This town has guards for a reason and I'm sure they'll manage the Cyclops on their own without me. Back on the road and I finally did it. I found an ogre, I got its attention, lured it over some water and it was deep enough to kill this thing so I tricked it into jumping after my ghost and this is my first large monster kill. I finished up all the remaining story quests in Vermund and was given a placeable port crystal and told to head for Batal. I've made this trip once before but hopefully my ox cart won't get ambushed this time. Fucking hell man. Okay, for once I was actually able to fight off an ambush and get back into the cart and ride the rest of the way to town. Before heading to Batal, I need to pay a visit to the Sphinx, and rather than a physical fight, the Sphinx wants to engage in a game of wits, and there's significant rewards for providing accurate answers to her riddles. I put down my port crystal so I can fast travel back here anytime I want, and I started with the Riddle of Madness, which tasks me to bring my beloved to the Sphinx. Ulrika and I are close because of all the quests I've done for her, and you can see how much she loves me because she just blushes all the time in my presence. I guess that's what love looks like. So I picked her up and teleported to the Sphinx with her to complete the first riddle. Then I was told to give the Sphinx my most prized possession and I chose a port crystal. This isn't much of a riddle as any item will do, but whatever I hand over gets duplicated and having the ability to fast travel more places is definitely useful. The next riddle was to go to the location where I found my first seekers token and retrieve a finders token. There are like over 100, 200, I don't remember, 220 maybe. The seekers tokens all around the world but I didn't want to have to deal with this so I haven't picked a single one up yet and I just ran a short distance from the Sphinx to pick up a nearby token and then I started the quest and came back to the same place to grab my finders token. So that's three riddles down, two to go. The riddle of eyes sends me to a nearby doorway where there is a dungeon and I'm supposed to get the most valuable object out of it and that object is the ceiling vial which is in a chest above the doorway. This item has the ability to seal an NPC inside and you can transport them to another location and I will be using it later in this video. I also had the pleasure of witnessing this very wacky moment where the goblins were for some reason trying to run away from me. The final riddle was impossible for me to complete without recruiting my pawn, but this is a solo run, so I chose to simply fail the riddle by offering an incorrect answer. Have you stones for eyes? Have you slop for brains? Be gone with you and this imposter. I shan't reward your ignorance. This finished part one of the Sphinx's Game of Wits, and she was about to take flight to a new location for part two, and I don't want to walk there, so I climbed on her back and I rode with her to the next location. Her next riddle tasked me with winning a duel while wearing a ring that reduces my damage dealt to essentially zero, but the joke's on her, I am used to having no damage, so I just lured my opponent away until I found some monsters and I let them kill the dude for me. After this, I had finally gotten to the quest that I did this entire thing for, I was tasked with bringing a specific NPC to the Sphinx, which wasn't hard at all, and my reward for completing this quest was a powerful trickster sensor called the Whimsical Daydream. Not only does it have better stats than my weapon, but it gives me gold every single time I land a hit on an enemy, so I can now farm for gold anytime I want. Having received everything I wanted from the Sphinx, I left the game of wits unfinished and traveled to Back Batal. Traveling continues to be extremely safe, as nothing Nothing will target me as long as my ghost is nearby. And after arriving in Bak Batal, I dropped a port crystal so I can fast travel here anytime I want, and I decided to splurge a bit and stay at the expensive inn. I've gone through a lot, and I deserve a good night's rest. Since I've acquired a better weapon, I figured it was time to upgrade my armor as well. I purchased the best trickster armor available in Bak Batal. My trickster rank was just shy of six at this moment, so I stepped outside Bak Batal to score a few kills. And I also wanted to test my new weapon's ability to farm for 
gold. I found a goblin that was willing to just stand still and let me hit him for as long as I wanted. And most of the hits with this weapon give 10 gold, but I would also receive 100 every so often and 1,000 if I got even more lucky. But throughout this entire video, I never scored a hit that got me more than 1,000, which was a bummer, but it's still nice to be able to generate gold on demand. It was also amusing to see that my weapon does technically deal damage because I did actually end up killing my piggy bank after hitting him for what felt like an eternity. I killed one more group of enemies to reach Trickster rank 6 and back in town checked to see what I'd unlocked and it was perfect. Everything I could have ever wanted, I received an augment that reduces my chance of getting ambushed while riding in ox carts, thank god. I also gained the ability to launch my ghost at distant enemies to possess them, which is going to make it so much easier for me to fight. This new ability is awesome. I can just stand inside one of my illusory walls and enemies just can't target me at all, and I can just launch my clone out and they will all just murder each other while I'm just hiding in almost complete safety. I still need to get a little hands-on to towards the end of the fight and throw some corpses to finish off that last enemy, but my combat process has become much simpler now. I needed to pop over to Harv Village for a quest and I had an idea while I was there. I was running low on gold, especially after buying more fairy stones for all this fast travel. So I walked down the coast from Harv Village where I knew there was an ooze or slime or you know, I don't know what it's called in this game. I used Espiel Incense to hover my ghost above the ground and keep the slime's attention. And I can literally just hit this thing for an infinite amount of time without it ever moving or dying because slimes are immune to physical damage. The only bummer about this is that it seems like after a while of doing this it stops giving me jackpots of a hundred or a thousand gold and it just stays at 10 gold per hit. Not really sure exactly how it works but whatever at least I can farm money very easily on demand. After progressing the story quest a bit more, I finally hit the roadblock. I need to get 15 Worms Life Crystals, which are acquired by defeating dragons. I headed back to my house in Bak Batal, skillfully dodging an NPC who clearly wanted to talk to me, and at home, I opened my storage to see how many crystals I had so far, only eight. I'd managed to pick up a few along the way, just wherever I saw them, but the most straightforward way for me to get the rest is going to be to defeat a dragon. Besides, if I can't defeat a dragon, then I won't be able to beat the final boss anyway, so now is as good a time as any to experiment. I tried to see if I could get some bandits and wolves to attack a dragon for me, but it went poorly in a hurry. Not only did they not ever attack the dragon, but my ghost dies extremely fast to the dragon, and unsurprisingly, I die quick as well. I happened to run into a pawn of my friend, Morgana Evelyn. Her main pawn, Shadow Cute, is a pretty high level fighter, so I thought maybe if I just carry her over to a dragon, she could slay it for me. A decent idea, but without support from a healer, Shadowcute did not fare well in the fight. Everything turned to chaos when a griffin crashed down onto the battlefield, but a griffin can't beat a dragon either, so my efforts had failed. It really seemed like my best bet was just going to be to follow the quest line and fight the dragon that it led to, so I started climbing a mountain to get there, convincing several goblins along the way to jump to their deaths. At the top of the mountain, I set up a port crystal and I teleported back to Har Village and picked up Ulrika. Then I brought her back with me and I now have a ranger to help me in the battle. For this quest, the mystic spearhand meister Sigurd offers to help as well, so I have a frontline damage dealer and a backline DPS in this one. As soon as the battle started, Ulrika tanked a very large amount of fire breath and never showed a health bar, which got me wondering if both of my soldiers were invulnerable to damage. And they fought for a really long time, but eventually Ulrika died, so I revived her with a wake stone to get her back in the fight, and things were going well, with Sigurd holding the dragon's attention, Ulrika shooting it with her bow, and me doing absolutely nothing. But unfortunately, Ulrika was killed again, and I only have one wake stone left, so I decided to save it in case my front line goes down. Looks like I'm going to need to join into this battle using the only weapon I can, corpses. I started tossing my corpse at the dragon, but quickly found out that it was very difficult to retrieve my weapon after each throw without risking getting hit by this thing. So I popped downstairs and grabbed a second corpse, and while I was downstairs, Sigurd died. I can't imagine doing this without him, so I used my last wake stone to get him back on his feet, and we had been fighting this dragon all day and continued fighting it through the night. 
With two corpses to throw, it was a little easier for me to retrieve one that was, you know, not in as dangerous of an area. And I just kept throwing it at this dragon, and we managed to slay the beast just a little while before morning, with me snaking the last hit with a corpse toss. I finally had the Worm's Life crystals I need to progress the storyline, although I don't feel any more confident in my ability to defeat the final boss, if I'm being honest. Before leaving, I picked up Ulrika's body and carried her out to my port crystal, scooped it up, and fairy stone back to Har Village, and I put her corpse in bed so she could be at rest. All right, fine, that's not very cool of me. I went to the inn and grabbed a wake stone from storage, and I revived her. You understand how heavy the burden of duty can be. From here, I thought that I was going to grind my vocation rank to max, but holy shit was it a grind, and any small mistakes were almost immediately punished with death. They killed my ghost so much faster than I thought they could, and that's all it takes, and I'm dead. I did manage to clear out a lot of combat encounters cleanly though. Uh, hiding inside my walls and throwing my ghost out to get enemies to target each other was very effective. It's just if I made any mistake, if I got hit by anything, dead. I decided it was time to unlock the ultimate ability of the trickster and I went to Vermund to try it out. And graphically, it looks super cool, but as a solo trickster, it couldn't be more useless. It just makes everything run away from me and that just, that accomplishes nothing. While I was in the capital, I decided to pay a visit visit to Queen Disa and talk to her, she just had this to say. I do not understand why the people should fear the coming of the dragon. I guess she's not scared of the dragon, that's cool for her, maybe she should fight it instead of me. It's time for me to start preparing for the final battle. My house in Bok Batal happens to be right on top of a rare book stand. This rare book stand sells spell tomes that even the trickster can use to cast spells. So I spent all my money on as many spell tomes as I could afford. I had about 60 ice spell tomes and 60 lightning spell tomes. I got challenged to a one-on-one -on -one duel while I was just kind of running around Bok Batal, and as a shock to literally nobody, I picked up a nearby NPC, threw it at my duel opponent to stagger him, and then just threw him against the wall like a hundred times until the duel was won. I went and I turned in all of my Worm's Life crystals and advanced this main storyline, and I started down the road towards the final boss fight. First though, I need to deal with a giant colossus that is coming out of the sea, and I can't really trick my way through this fight, but I can certainly hop on these turrets and blast the big guy as much as possible. And turns out that's all that's really necessary, although if I'm being really honest, I am wondering if you can just AFK and just win this fight because it didn't feel like it was so much of a fight as it was just waiting 20 minutes for this thing to walk down a path and then die in a cutscene, but I don't know, and whatever, it doesn't matter because I'm on the final stretch and I am stocked up with items for the final fight, so I rested at an inn to save the game before heading out. There's one quick fight between me and the dragon and I almost got one tapped the instant it started, but I did manage to summon an illusory wall and it, I guess for some reason, confused them enough to save my life, even though I wasn't in it but whatever, didn't matter. They didn't seem to know what to do, so I sent my ghost to possess an enemy and strapped in for what I thought was going to be a long process of getting them all to kill each other, but then the fight just sort of ended. I don't really know why, but I'm cool with it at this point. I just want to try and take down this dragon, and the dragon does give you a choice. Do you want to fight or not? So naturally, I ran up and hit him in the leg with a money shot, securing 10 gold. I rode the dragon out to our battlefield, and now I need to wipe out seven health bars. Okay, so I am going to cast Fulgurus Lord, and hopefully that's not, it's not moving. That health bar didn't move. Did that health bar move at all? Okay, hopefully I do more damage with my frost spell, because if not, then dude, that health bar like didn't even move. Okay, what if I throw the little ice cubes left behind? Okay, that's a little, that's a little bit of a chunk. No, let go of the dragon. Give me, let me get the ice cube. Move, move, please. Okay, here you go. That is not, that's not enough. I mean, like, that is damage, but that's not enough. I can say with certainty that I regret choosing Queen Disa as the NPC to trap in my only ceiling vial because I didn't even catch her. She's, there's no, because there's no way she's going to fight. Yeah, she's not going to fight. I'm going to have to just throw, I literally just have a corpse that I can throw at the dragon. It's gonna do less damage than an ice cube block. Oh my gosh, that was nothing. That was nothing. I should have brought a real NPC. I should have brought 
like Sigurd or something. Can you bring the Meisters? I should have brought something better and now I can't. It's locked in, it's saved. I should have duplicated the ceiling vial instead of a port crystal so I could have brought two NPCs because this is not enough damage. It's not enough. Oh my God. So I found out that if I use the lightning bolt on the dragon's head, it does a little bit better than if I aim for the paws. So at least that's something I'm like kind of getting through the health bar. I am completely out of wake stones. I am out of healing and I have no more lightning scrolls left. And the ice ones are a lot riskier to use. And honestly, I can do more damage by just throwing Disa's corpse over and over than trying to get the, oh, here we go. This is, I think this is the end. And that's the end. Fuck. I, that was, that was a really long time of fighting. I fought for almost an hour. I was feeling a bit desperate at this point, so I decided to see if the trickster can somehow manage to cut off Medusa's head so I can use it to turn the dragon to stone. And I spent over an hour smacking this snake in the neck with my sensor, dying on my first attempt because I didn't bring any healing items, but I really, really gave it a shot. Um, but I'm pretty sure that the sensor can't cut off her head. You need a bladed weapon. And so I lured a bunch of bandits into her lair and let them die so I could use their corpses as weapons and kill this beast off. I did try to get that last hit as a headshot with my sensor to see if it mattered, and it just didn't matter. Damn, I was really running out of ideas, and I thought maybe I just needed to stock up on hundreds of spell tomes, but I found out that there's a limit of 99 max in my inventory, so that isn't going to work either. I was really, really losing hope that I was gonna be able to beat this fight, and I just don't consider it to be a win to walk away from the dragon fight, so that's just not an option for me. But I went back to the fight to just kind of mess around and try some stuff out. I wasn't even intending on beating the dragon uh, on this on this trip out here when I found a breakthrough. Now, obviously, there's a bunch of turrets around the battlefield, and the fight eventually causes them all to be destroyed by the dragon. But I was wondering how much damage I could get down before every turret is broken. After dealing some damage, I rode the dragon to the top where the really big turret is, and I used the big turret to blast two full health bars off the dragon and prevent it from flying anymore. Then I tried to mount the smaller turrets and get some shots off, but the dragon summons explosives that hit me and blew up both of the turrets. But it got me thinking, what if I could use my ghost to bait the dragon's explosion attack away from the turrets while I open fire? I experimented for a while, moving my ghost to different spots to see if I could find a spot where it wouldn't get hit but would still get targeted. And the reason that it needs to not get hit is that it doesn't have enough health to survive long enough for me to crank up the turret and fire it. So I need to have it be somewhere that is safe. And after trying a bunch of different spots, I used Espiel Incense to move my ghost a little bit below the ledge and I found my breakthrough. With my ghost below me, the dragon for some reason fails to target its explosives correctly and it gets stuck in an infinite loop of attacking my ghost and missing. Now all I need to do is try again and make sure the turrets don't get destroyed and I might just have a way to win this fight. And it would honestly be like such a such a trickster way, like literally tricking the dragon into attacking the wrong location. It would be perfect. I gave it a try, but the dragon destroyed all the turrets before I landed the big shot on him. So I took a swan dive and tried again. Next attempt, I simply missed my chance to take flight with the dragon and I was left on the ground. But finally, on my next try, I found my moment. I rode the dragon up to the top and I landed a big shot to clip its wings. I positioned my ghost and I baited the dragon's attacks, sealing it into an infinite loop. Then I opened fire, landing shot after shot after shot. And the dragon was slowly moving and thankfully it was in a direction that gave me a better shot. So eventually the dragon had moved to a location where I pretty much couldn't even miss anymore. I kept firing, wiping out all of the dragon's reserve health bars and lowering it so that only one more shot was needed. And then for some reason, and I decided that Disa should be here to witness my victory and I pulled her out of the ceiling vial. And hilariously, the dragon instantly targeted her location, blowing her off the cliffside and also blowing up my turret. And the other turret didn't have line of sight, so I've gotta go down and actually finish this myself. I tried to find Disa's corpse because I was gonna just use that as my final weapon to throw at the dragon, but I couldn't find it. It was probably here somewhere. I didn't try super hard to find it because I was ready to be done, if I'm being honest. So instead, I picked a jar up off the ground and I threw it right at the dragon's chest. 
The dragon collapsed and my sensor landed the final hit, securing me 100 gold and, of course, victory in this fight. After everything I've been through, I decided I'd had enough. I opted not to go to the unmoored world, leaving that challenge open to somebody with more patience than I have. But the question of can the trickster solo clear Dragon's Dogma 2 has been answered. They absolutely can, you just have to be a little tricky to pull it off.